absolutely do not do this at your local repair shop or you will be spending money that you do not need to. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Up, everybody's having a great week. Spring has sprung at the shop and we are getting slammed. I've been getting in a ton of units this last week and I can already see I got stuff that's video worthy because I'm gonna let you in on what not to do at your repair shop to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. Now, when it comes to repairs, the most important part of the entire process is the diagnosing. And if you don't know anything about the item you're bringing in, or you don't tell us the whole truth, a lot of times that's gonna cost you a lot of money that you don't need to spend. So, first one up on deck, I had a customer bring in their Poulan Pro PR2322 hedge trimmers, which they're not bad. I mean, they might vibrate like crazy and shake you to death while they're running but you know it, for the price point they're at they're they're not a bad trimmer now the only unfortunate part about these trimmers is that they were used probably one time looking at everything and never used again so the customer had it sitting around his house and decided he wanted to steal the primer bulb a three dollar primer bulb off of it and disassembled everything the gas tank for some reason was taken off the bracket um the the carburetor had been put back together, but put back together um, backwards to where the um, screws were um, sort of wedged in there completely the wrong way. So he just let it sit and was not worried about it until now it's spring and he's decided he wants to use it. So he brings it to me with a Ziploc bag full of the parts that I've already put back on there, all the screws and stuff to hold the gas tank on. And I went ahead and I had to change the fuel lines out and fuel filter because his were rotten. But what are these? Now our shop works on tons of different brands of, of equipment. So although a hedge trimmer is a hedge trimmer, it all works pretty much the same. All of these have different parts and pieces depending on what unit you're working on. So if he comes in with a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that he obviously grabbed off his bench thinking, eh, it might go with it, it might not, I don't know. Well, I really don't know either unless I do some major investigating to look it all up, inspect every single hole to make sure that nothing's missing out of all the, you know, the screws and the bolts and stuff like that. So I did, I made sure that everything was there and this is what I have left over. A um, pile of stuff that I'm pretty sure doesn't go in there. I hope not. So, <laughs> but after uh, getting it all put back together, I had to put a carburetor kit in there because whenever he put his carburetor back together backwards, he ruined his diaphragm. So, put a carburetor kit in there, but I guess it sat for so long, it doesn't matter what I do. The thing is just leaking through like crazy and uh, it needs a new carburetor now. So, although this guy's $3 primer bulb is going to end up costing him probably $100 after his carburetor labor fuel lines, fuel filter, and fuel. It is not half as bad as this next customer. So next up, I've got a customer brought in their steel pole saw. They're pretty nice to have, right? Well, it's always nice if it's got an engine on it. Where's the engine? It is completely tore apart in this box. So what do I do now? I'm sure not going to um, put it all back together to figure out what was wrong with it before <laughs> I go to fix it. So the only option here is getting a whole nother engine. Unfortunately, I cannot get a, a complete engine for this. I'm gonna have to get a lower unit. I'm gonna have to tear all this apart, take the clutch off, um, get the uh, starter pawl cup off, and everything else is pretty much removed already, the coil. But um, yeah, this is gonna cost a pretty penny in labor whenever it would have been really nice if this was all together for me to figure out what was actually wrong with it. You think that's bad? Wait till you see what I got in the back. Now, we all love our Forrest Gump snappers, guys, but at the same time, sometimes you just gotta give up on something. Seriously, I mean, really? Now, my husband Ron works on all the riders that come in here, but unfortunately, he can't stop doing what he's doing when he's working on a rider to go out and help somebody unload and see, you know, assess the situation of what they're dropping off. So a lot of times the other guys do it. Unfortunately, this was a seriously bad call. When the customer dropped it off, they did come to Ron and ask, you know, hey dude, we got this really old snapper out there. Are you sure you're gonna wanna work on it? The guy says that it runs, it's just not going uphill real well. Changing a drive disc out on these is really not a big deal, so Ron didn't even 
look at it really. He just said, go ahead, that's fine, drop it off. Unfortunately though, do you think this thing runs? Absolutely not. This 30 year old engine has no air filters assembly. The muffler's hanging off of it. The wiring's all cut. The, you can see it's falling apart. It does not start at all. Pretty sure there was water in the gas, but the fact is, is I'm going to end up charging this customer $40 for us to haul it with our four wheeler inside to give them the diagnosis of why we're not fixing it and hauling it back out. But our worst nightmare is the next one I'm gonna show you. And last but certainly not least, a Craftsman Zero Turn 42 inch deck with a twin cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine on it. And with prices of mowers these days, guys, you gotta fix what you got. But this, this right here, this is where I have nightmares, okay? So the customer brought it in. Let me show you what he said and uh, all the information that he gave to us was, won't start, adjust handles. Okay, so let's start out with the won't start issue of it. Um, we figured out that it was electrical because whenever we tested it, it was only getting four amps to the solenoid, which means it definitely has a solenoid or a safety switch problem. So we went ahead and started checking all the safety switches and all the safety switches ended up being fine. So the next step we go is to wiring. Now, unfortunately, whenever we went to go check all this, the uh, battery cable just broke off of it. <laughs> so you can see the debris that's up in here. Okay, this thing been sitting forever. We did take this top shroud off and this we already had blow blowed out because it was completely caked. This thing has never, ever been serviced. The fuel filter is disgusting. It's down there. It looks like part of the debris though. The gas cap is uh, missing its top. I don't even know what this is really, but you could see straight through it. So the gas tank is completely full of water. And at this point we call the customer and we say, hey dude, um, we need some more information on this. And he tells us, well, it was one of his renters was using it and he you know didn't know much about it other than they said something about it would that it would not have any power whenever they moved the handle so they thought that was the issue on it so if it's a wiring issue you've got to go through every inch of wiring till you find the short or whatever because um, if it's not the safety switches it's in the wiring somewhere but before we do that we have an engine that's been sitting forever so it's going to need carburetor work a service oh Wait, check this out here. Look at how much oil's in it. <laughs> Look at how nasty that is. I mean, yeah, so we can't even really start this engine until we do some servicing to it. And we have to completely take all the gas and water out of the tank. So I call the customer, I'm like, look, dude, are you planning on spending a grip on this? Because it needs so much work. I mean, you're really gonna be invested in this mower. And he was a little hesitant at the same time. He's like, well, I don't wanna just throw it away. And I said, okay, so we'll dig a little farther, you know, and, and come up with a guesstimate, but it could end up being, I have no idea, 500 to $1,000. I don't know where we're gonna end up. I don't even know if the drive system's gonna work once we get it going. I don't know if the engine's, you know, completely screwed up from the lack of oil in it. I don't know any of this without taking a bunch of steps to even get there. So I'm gonna charge a huge amount of labor in just diagnosing and figuring out all these other things that you know need to be fixed before we even know if it's gonna be worth fixing. So he, I, I definitely am gonna to have to get a deposit because I'm not going into this thing, you know, hundreds of dollars in labor to find out that it's a dead machine. But it didn't matter because once we investigated a little further, we found out there's a big problem with this mower and we're not going to fix it. So of course we're not able to check like the PTO and, and stuff like that, but we can take a small gander down here at the belts and we can see the, the pulley looks like it might be okay and the spindles don't look like they have broke legs. But when we come down here a little farther, um, it's missing half the deck. It needs an entire deck. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's missing a, a whole section of it right here. So. Um, the deck alone is going to be probably $600, and uh, that pretty much seals the deal. Too much of a gamble, we're not getting into it. So once again, I'm going to charge at least $40 labor just for the diagnosing on this thing, maybe more. 
So guys, what have we learned today? Make sure you tell your mechanic everything you can think of. And if it's a machine that you're not sure about, then your mechanic sure is not gonna be sure about it either. And it's a huge gamble for them and you, cause you're gonna end up paying maybe a huge amount of money in diagnosing for a machine that ends up not even being fixed in the long run. Another thing, make sure to bring it in in the middle of winter when the shops are slow and they don't mind working on things like these because the last thing you need to do is bring it in on March 1st. And before I head out, I want to let everybody know on Chicanic.com, when you go to the Shop Now section, I added all of my favorite tools. So they're not just in the description box below underneath the video. You can see pictures of all of them and find that tachometer that everybody always asks about. You can also find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or, or find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Chicanic. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.